A Paradise Called Texas by Janice Jordan Shuffleman. Chapter 19, Lisette and the Shaman. Mina remembered how an Indian had cured a man on the way to Fredericksburg. Maybe Indian me medicine could help Papa too. It was a hope at least. But Mina did not dare to leave Papa alone in the cabin. She thought of Lisette. Yeah, she must run and fetch Lisette to stay with Papa while she went to the Indian camp. She wet the pack again and placed it on Papa's forehead. He stirred. Mina kissed him lightly on the cheek and went outside. The sky was just beginning to lighten and the air was cool and fresh. Mina ran all the way to the Bickenbox cabin. The door was open and someone was stirring about inside. Frau Bickenbach appeared. Why, Mina, what brings you here at dawn? My papa is sick and I came to ask Tante Lisette if she would help me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but I know Lisette will come. Frau Bickenbach pointed up to the loft. You just go on up. When Mina got to the dark loft, she could see Lisette's form sitting up in bed. Mina did not want to awaken Frederica, so she whispered, Tante Lisette, Papa is very sick and I need your help. Mina paused while she mustered the courage to tell Lisette her plan. Oh my, Lisette touched Mina's arm. Of course, Mina, how can I help? Will you stay with Papa while I go for an Indian medicine man? Lisette gasped. Mina, you cannot. I must. But Mina, Dr. Schubert. He did not help Papa, Mina interrupted. Tante Lisette, listen, I had a dream last night. I dreamed that I went to an old Indian who said he could cure Papa. Lisette looked at Mina for a moment in silence. Then it must be God's will. She began to dress quickly. You run back to your Papa. I will come. As Mina started to leave, Lisette added, Do not say anything about it to my mother. Mina nodded silently. When she got back to the cabin, Papa was still asleep. She poured a cup of water and put it on the box beside Papa's bed. Then she got the blue beaded belt and fastened it around her waist. It was up to her, Mina thought. What happened to Papa was up to her. She took a deep breath, straightened her shoulders, and went outside to wait. At last, Lisette came. Are you sure about this, Mina? Yeah. But Indians, you cannot tell what they might do. Chief Castelletta is my friend. He would not let anyone harm me. I do not think your papa would like it, Mina. But I cannot let papa die the way mama did. Mina's throat tightened. I have to do something, and God has told me what to do. Tears began to stream down Mina's cheek. Lisette took Mina in her arms. I understand, Mina. After a moment, Lisette loosened her arms and held Mina out from her looking into her face intently. Be very careful. Mina wiped the tears away. Yeah, I will. Then she turned and headed for the Indian camp down by the river. She broke into a run for she was anxious to get help for Papa. She slowed to a walk to catch her breath and then ran again. At the river, Mina walked along the bank until she came opposite the camp. Indian women were dipping their water baskets in the river and carrying them back in, up to camp. Mina watched from behind some bushes. Then a young girl came down to the river's edge, and Mina saw that it was a Maya. <clears throat> Drawing a deep breath, Mina stepped out from behind the bush and waved at a Maya. The girl looked startled at first, but then she smiled, put down the water basket, and ran toward camp. The women stood watching Mina. In a few moments, Amaya re reappeared astride a horse and rode across the river to where Mina stood. She dismounted, and the two girls looked at one another. Mina did not know how to tell her about Papa. Without thinking, Mina said, My Papa is sick. Amaya cocked her head and looked at Mina, not understanding. Mina thought for a moment, How can I make her understand? Then Mina pointed to herself with both hands and repeated, My... She reached up high with one hand. Papa. Here she rubbed her cheeks with both hands to describe a beard. Amaya was watching her closely and said a word that sounded something like Papa with a question in her voice. Yeah, that's right. Then Mina lay down upon the ground and groaned, is sick. Mina finished her sentence and looked at Amaya. The Indian girl seemed to understand. She led the horse to a large boulder and holding him by the mane helped Mina get on. Then Amaya pulled herself up on in front. The horse stepped carefully through the river, lifting his hoofs high. Once in the camp, Amaya stopped the horse and dismounted. She said a word to Mina and went into a teepee. 
Mina slid off the horse but remained close beside him. The horse whinnied and shook his mane, stomping one hoof. Indians began to gather. Men emerged from their teepees and women came up from the river and gathered around. Everyone looked at Mina. One squaw pointed to Mina's blue beaded belt and said something to another. The Indians drew closer and closer. Mina wanted to bolt and run, but she could not move. Her heart began to thump within her chest. It was different when a few of these Indians came to Fredericksburg to trade, but now Mina was alone in the middle of their camp, surrounded. To Mina's relief, Amaya came back with her father and spoke to him, pointing at Mina. Chief Castelletta looked at Mina, but he did not smile. He uttered some words. Mina heard one that she had learned, shaman, and she knew that it meant medicine man. They do understand, Mina thought, and he is going to help. Then she thought of Papa lying on the bed, flushed with fever. Please hurry, Mina pleaded. Even though the Indians did not know the words, they seemed to understand the urgency in her voice. Soon the shaman appeared. Mina had never seen such an old man with so few clothes on, only a loincloth. His dark, leathery skin sagged on his thin frame. His long white hair was thick and coarse like, a, like the man in her dream. He had not a tooth in his head and seemed to be chewing on his cud as he eyed Mina silently. In his hand, he held a drawstring pouch. The shaman's horse was brought, and a young warrior held him up. He sat astride his horse, still chewing his cud. He tied the pouch to the wooden saddle frame and made a sound, Un. Chief Castelletta mounted his horse and reached out his hand to Mina. He pulled her up on his horse behind him, and they started down the bank, splashed through the river, and up the other side toward Fredericksburg.